I don't exactly play a lot of video games anymore nowadays. I am not exactly sure on why this is, but often I find a lot of games to be boring or uninteresting and I quit playing them after like 10 minutes. This has meant that my diet regarding video games has changed a lot. As a kid, I could play whatever I want and I would be happy with it. Not so much nowadays. Keeping this in mind, I think that you can imagine my surprise when I started playing The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild and I found out that I liked it. Now, I have never really played a lot of 3D Zelda games. I played Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons on the Game of Color a lot as a kid and I love those games, but those are 2D and very different from the rest of the series. Also, they were developed by Capcom, which probably explains why Nintendo pretends that those, ga those two games do not exist. Ricky for Smash when Nintendo. So when Breath of the Wild was announced, I basically treated it like any other Zelda announcement, with indifference. By the time we actually got to see footage of Breath of the Wild, I was very much already disillusioned with Nintendo. Although I grew up with Nintendo's Game Boy Color, and I bought a Nintendo DS and Nintendo 2DS when I got older, I never really developed this cult following for Nintendo that many of my generation seem to have. Most Nintendo games are uninteresting to me and I was never really fond of the hardware gimmicks that they used to do. However, when it came to Breath of the Wild, I first started getting interested in it when I was at a friend's place and I saw him play the game. I was intrigued by its unique art design and aesthetic and its gameplay looked interesting. Eventually, after a lot of thinking and after quite some time had passed, I began to play the game myself and I found that I liked it a lot. Now, this video is not about how Breath of the Wild is... THE BEST GAME EVER! Because although I like this game, I also think that it has more than a few issues. I don't want to talk much about the gameplay or the lore or how this game is very different from the 3D Zelda games that came before it. No, instead I want to talk about the mood of the game, the atmosphere, and what it tries to tell us. You see, I have always considered the atmosphere that a game conveys to be one of its most important parts. I have played so many games that were good on technical levels and did almost everything right, but I found absolutely atrocious to play because the game had no atmosphere. Atmosphere can make or break a game for me. A game with good atmosphere can keep me enthralled for hours, regardless of the quality of its gameplay. For the most part, at least. A game with awful gameplay does start to get on my nerves rather quickly. A good example of a game that does the opposite of this is Age of Wonders 3. Age of Wonders 3 is a turn-based strategy game that does almost everything right. It has interesting factions, a cool story, very good gameplay and a good soundtrack. Yet, I find the game to be utterly boring and uninteresting. Why? Because the game to me feels sterile and moodless. It's all statistics and numbers without any sense of wonder or exploration or atmosphere. Theoretically, I should love this game. It is a fantasy turn-based strategy game with very cool gameplay mechanics and neat aesthetics. But I don't, because I just don't like the atmosphere. Now, what exactly is it in Breath of the Wild that makes me like that game so much? I think it has all mostly to do with the way the game presents its world. This has been something that the people at Overly Sarcastic Productions talked a little bit about in a video about Breath of the Wild. Special thanks to them for creating that video by the way, since that was very inspirational. The world as presented in Breath of the Wild is very old. Breath of the Wild is at the end of the Zelda timeline, which I cannot believe is a thing that exists. So all of the events of the other games are ancient history and myth by the time that you roll out of your cave at the beginning of the game. I am not sure if this was intentional by the game developers, but the world feels very old. You can find ancient ruins everywhere and if you are a Zelda nerd then you can even find references to the other games scattered all across the map. Which brings me to another important thing. You see, Breath of the Wild takes place in what is essentially a post-apocalyptic world. I'm not making this up. The entire story of the game revolves around you fixing the mess left by Calamity Ganon. A hundred years before the start of the game, you got wrecked by Calamity Ganon, and he essentially reached his goal of destroying the kingdom of Hyrule and leaving it into the state that it, that it exists into today. 
when you wake up a hundred years later, your main goal is to finish what you started and defeat Calamity Ganon before Zelda cannot keep him contained anymore in Hyrule Castle. Sure, you still have a big Betty to fight, but even if you defeat him, then Hyrule is still in ruins. Ganon has essentially won and there's nothing you can do about that. You can see this reflected in the game as well. The world feels very empty, but in a melancholic way. And you get the feeling that you're essentially walking to the ruins of what used to be a civilization once. Sure, there are still people around in towns, not to mention all the monsters that are around. But in many cases, you spend a significant portion of the game walking through what is essentially the aftermath of a big war. When you think of the post-apocalypse, what is the first thing that comes to mind? Dry wastelands, lack of vegetation, constant grey skies, a bunch of maniacs in souped-up cars with spikes and leather everywhere chasing you. These are all images that are conjured up by our popular perception of the post-apocalypse. The post-apocalypse in our mind is dour and depressing, often inspired by Cold War images of a nuclear winter. Breath of the Wild is interesting in that the post-apocalypse, as portrayed in that game, is actually rather calm and positive. Like sure, major cities and towns are gone, but people are still around, surviving and in some cases even thriving. Plant life and vegetation is abundant and animals are very prominent. Breath of the Wild's atmosphere sketches a more positive view of the post-apocalypse. Sure, lots of bad things happened, make no mistake, but life just goes on, just as it always has. You're walking through a still living and breathing world, and the atmosphere makes this all very clear to you. Breath of the Wild's map design is done in a very deliberate way. It does not outright tell you the story, but rather lets you figure out the story gradually on your own. Some of this is more obvious than others, but Breath of the Wild's map is filled with stories and you're the one experiencing them. Now, what creates a good atmosphere in a game? That really depends on the type of game, but in general it is a harmonious combination of graphics, aesthetics, soundtracks, sound effects and gameplay. I will say that Breath of the Wild's open-ended gameplay makes it especially suitable for creating an atmospheric experience. But its unique visual design and graphics, in combination with its minimal but excellent soundtrack and sound effects all blend together to create an experience that is very melancholic, but also very calming. I have often spent times in the game where I basically stop what I'm doing and just take in the environment around me. I rarely have had a game make me do that. Breath of the Wild, to me, is a game about light at the end of a tunnel. Its backstory is apocalyptic, and you are walking through the ruins of, an, of a world. But life goes on, and eventually the darkness will fade. It kind of reminds me of back when I was a kid, and I was really interested in astronomy. I loved reading about the planets, stars, comets, asteroids, pulsars, quasars and all kinds of other astronomical objects. Once I had gained a glimpse at the majesty of the universe and more importantly its immense size, it makes you realize that your own life and even your own whole world are minuscule in comparison. Some people would find this terrifying, and I don't blame them, but I've always found some comfort in this. There's a certain comfort in knowing that everything will pass eventually, and that in the grand scheme of things, nothing really matters, so you might as well enjoy your life and the things you do. Now look, I realize that a lot of what I'm saying is my own projection. I played Breath of the Wild back when I was essentially locked up inside and in an awful mental state, so it kind of functioned as a pick-me-up for me. It was essentially my equivalent of a pandemic game, so I realized that a lot of what I'm saying here might not be everyone's experience. Trust me that when I say that as much as I love this game, it is not without criticism. Its gameplay can be annoying at times, and the game suffers from some performance issues in some places. Its open world structure is also not for everyone, plus I'm having some minor concerns about the direction that the sequel might be taking. However, that is for the future. 
To me, Breath of the Wild is a game about moving on after a tragedy. It is a game about the post-apocalypse. It is a game about rebuilding and regrowth. In the end, it is a game for me that makes me happy and gives me hope for the future. And honestly, with all the flat out apocalyptic stuff that is happening now, I need hope, something hopeful like this. Also, you play as a moaning, hot, androgynous elf twink and you're surrounded by hot people three times your size and oh baby, I'm here for it! <laughs>